Hello everyone, let's solve a new lead code problem together. Today we will solve the lead code 121 best time to buy and sell stock. So here it says you are given an array prices where prices of i is the price of a given stock at the eth day. What we want to do is we want to maximize your profit by choosing a single day to buy one stock and choosing a different day in the future to sell the stock. What we want to do, we want to maximize or return the maximum profit that we can achieve from this transaction. If we cannot achieve any profit, then we return zero. So first, let's go through an example. Here, assuming that we have this table or this array of prices, and what we want to do is we want to find the maximum profit that we can make out of this input array from buying and selling stocks. So the first intu intuition that comes to our minds is to go with a brute force solution. So how to do that? So for example, first we buy at this day and we check all the future days that we can use or that can give us a maximum profit. So here, as we can see, seven is the greatest. So it will give us all values less than zero. All right. So next, what we do, we move on to the second one and we do the same operation again and again. And always here, just don't forget that we want only to buy at a single day and sell in the future so we cannot sell in the past. So once we move to an, a next or another input uh, from our array, we need to forget about the previous ones. But the brute force solution, we need to have two for loops. All right, and this will give us a time complexity of big O of n squared, which is okay, but it's not the best solution because we can do better than that and we can implement a solution with only big O of n. So the idea here is to use a sliding window technique and this sliding window technique, it will work in this way. So first we will have our first buying price and we will try to move on each time and see if we can maximize the profit. So here we have seven minus, minus three, it will give us negative four, and then we'll move to the five and it will give us negative two. But here, meanwhile, what we want to do, so here the idea behind maximizing the profit is to find a minimum price that we can buy at that time or at that day, and then try to maximize the profit from that minimum price. So here we see that we have three is less than seven. So let's move or let's resize our window and have this or let's buy at this day. So here in this case, we see that we have five minus three. So if we buy at three and sell at five, we will have a profit of two. All right, so let's move on here. So then we move to the next element. So we have three minus one or like one minus three, it will give us two. But here we see that this one is less than the price that we used to bought before. So let's move our window in here and then let's continue. Here we will have six minus one and six minus one will give us five. Six minus one equals five and this five is the maximum so far. All right. And then what we need to do is to continue sliding our window and then we will have four minus one equals three, but the maximum so far was five. And we can continue in this way. So for example, let's say we have eight in here and we can continue this way and we will have eight minus one, it will equal seven and the maximum profit will be seven in this case. So now let's go through the different steps that we need to implement in order to have this algorithm that will return the maximum profit of the best time to buy and sell stock or like it will return the maximum profit that we can make out of buying and selling stocks. So first I will have a variable called max and I will initialize it to zero since here we, we have if we cannot do a maximum or, or if we cannot achieve any profit, we need to return zero. So I will initialize a max with zero and then I will have a min buying price and I will initialize it. So let's say this array is called P and, and I will initialize it to P of zero. So like I will point it to the first element of my array. And then all I need to do is for each X, X means the element in this array in P, what I want to do, I want first to 
try to maximize my profit. So my max, this variable right here, equals the max value between the x, which is the day where I want to sell, minus the mean buying price. And of course, the max itself. So I want to find always the maximum between the old max and the new calculated price. And then we want to minimize the buying price. So here I will have my mean buying price equals the minimum of x, this price itself. So for example, when we achieve this one and the minimum buying price was three, so we want to try out with this one. So it will be x and my mean buying price. And that's it. And then all I need to do is to return my max. So whether I have or I can achieve a profit or, or not, I will return zero since my max is already zero. So this is the intuition and how we can solve this problem. Now let's try to do a manual execution for this problem. All right, so now what, what I have, I have two pointers, one pointing to the first element and then the second one pointing to the next one. My maximum price is zero and my mean buying price so far is seven since it's the first element or we initialized it to the first element. So here, what I will do, first I need to calculate the max between the buying, uh, the, the selling day, which is this element, the orange one, minus the mean buying price, which is the blue one. So here I will have negative four. So this is not greater than my max. So what I want to do, I do nothing, but I need to check. I want to check if my mean buying price or like I want to get the minimum buying price. So in this case, I can move this one here. So my mean buying price is here and I can change it to three. All right, then we know we move to the next element and then we have our max equals five minus three. And in this case, I get two. So let's update the max and the mean buying price is still three since five is greater than three. Then we know we move to the next element. We will have one minus three, which is negative two. So we don't update the max, but we need to update the min buying price. So let's move this one here and let's change this one to one. Then when we move to the next element, six. So we have six minus one equals five. So I need to update my maximum to five and then I move to the next one. So the mean buying price is not less, so six is greater than one, so I don't need to update it. So we move to the next step. Here we will have four minus one equals three, which is not greater than five. And now we reach the end of the table or at the end of the array, so the operation is done. So this is how we can implement the solution for the best time to buy and sell stocks. Now, finally, let's have a look on the code. It's quite simple and let's see how we can implement this. Are you looking to dive into the world of data science, machine learning or coding with Python? Brilliant is the platform that brings all of these fields into one place, offering an immense and interactive learning experience where you can not only learn, but also practice as you go. No more struggling to understand tough concepts or searching for scratched resources. Brilliant makes it easy. The visually engaging lessons complete with animated presentation helps break down even the most challenging topics, making them easier to digest and retain. If you need a refresher or want to dive deeper into math concepts, Brilliant is the perfect place to go. From algebra and calculus to more advanced areas like linear algebra or for graphic programming or probability for data science, they have it all. I love how incredibly convenient it is to quickly find the lessons I need. Whether I'm brushing up on complex numbers or tackling new ideas on machine learning. Personally, I use Brilliant whenever I need a quick and accessible refresher or if I want to challenge myself with material. The platform's clear step-by-step -step lessons makes it easy to stay engaged and continue improving without feeling overwhelmed. If you're interested, I highly recommend giving Brilliant a try. You can explore all their offerings with a 30-day free trial. And if you decide to stick around, you'll get 20% of an annual subscription by visiting brilliant.org slash Buali Ali. First, we will have a variable called profit. And then I have a min buying price, which, which I will initialize it to the first element of my array. Then starting from the second index of the array, 
what I want to do, first I want to maximize my profit by calculating the current price minus the mean buying price and of course the profit itself. And then every time I encounter a, a less or like a smaller buying price, I need also to update it as well. So here I use the method min between the mean buying price and the price itself. And finally, I just need to return the profit. And if I don't find anything in here that I can maximize, it will be zero since our profit is already initialized to zero. So that was it for today's problem. I hope you liked it. And don't forget to support me if you like the content, subscribe to my channel and share the video with your friends and see you in the next one.